driving a new supercar in Miami. We Americans love speed, and we love supercars. In fact, we're the single most important market for some big names like Porsche and Ferrari. So in order for a new supercar to come on the market and really be a global success, well, it's got to win the hearts of Americans. This is the McLaren MP4-12C, the latest British supercar. McLaren is not your normal car company. It's one of the most successful racing teams in Formula One, and this is what their engineers think you should be driving on the street. It is powerful, with a twin-turbo V8 putting out 616 horsepower. It is fast, with a top speed of 207 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in 3 seconds flat. It is expensive, about $250,000. And it is possibly the most obsessively engineered car ever made. It's like a collection of some of the wildest Formula One ideas. And it's street legal. But the problem for McLaren is that here, most people don't care about all these high-tech gizmos. Most of us like our cars loud, raw, and unapologetic. Ride quality in this car is nothing short of sublime. It could be the most comfortable supercar ever. Does that take away from its superness? McLaren says they've incorporated an and sense of engineering, meaning that it's both comfortable and ridiculously fast. It's lightweight and strong. It's powerful and actually gets 18 miles per gallon, completely avoiding the gas guzzler's tax. One of the only supercars on the planet to do that. Wow, that gets the job done. So it comes down to this. If the McLaren is as quick around the racetrack and as capable a supercar as people say, and is this good on the road, well, then McLaren has created truly an absolute masterpiece. If it isn't quick on the racetrack, then it's just an old man's supercar. A few miles away from the permatans and retirees of Miami, I found an abandoned airstrip the perfect place to open the McLaren up. No, Lord! That's what I'm talking about! With the Archon bounce tires, it goes 0 to 60 in just 3.0 seconds. A lot of testers have said that's the fastest any rear-wheel drive car has gone. There's something just so gnarly about this V8 screaming at 8,500 RPM. Efficiency, that it does everything. The shifting, instantaneous. The acceleration, brutal. The braking, it actually throws up a braking fin. The problem with braking, of course, is that all of the weight dives forward when you hit the brakes. What McLaren has done is they've stuck this huge wing that pops up. And when you hit the brakes, now the rear tires are responsible for more than 30% of the braking. It's a huge difference, and you can actually feel it. It really is just an absolute race car. Good Lord! The shifting is so fast, you can just grab a gear and then drift. I'm just leaving smoke all the way down this runway. English. It's like an Englishman with a black belt. You know he could kick your ass, but he's like, oh, sorry, I just kicked your ass. I'm really sorry about that. The Formula One-inspired McLaren seemed to have it all. And when it comes to fast cars and racing, we have a slightly different approach than the Brits. 
NASCAR, the ultimate expression of American power. If the McLaren could win over the good old boys here, it could win over anybody. Meet Fast and All Racing's number 99 Ford Fusion, driven by Carl Edwards, 57-time winner in NASCAR's top three series. If the McLaren is about precision strikes, the Fast and All 99 Fusion is carpet bombing. At its heart is a V8 pumping out massive horsepower. With none of the technical wizardry of the MP4 to keep it on the track, it is brute strength with a seat and roll cage. The question was, could someone so steeped in NASCAR be won over by the McLaren? I was ready to give it a shot and take part in a 10-lap sparring session at Homestead Miami Speedway. We'd use the road course, which combines the NASCAR oval and the tight cornering of the infield track. Check that out. What is that? That is a new McLaren. It's a pretty cute car. I think cute's a good word to describe that. Gentlemen, Tanner Faust, Carl Edwards, hey, man. Yeah, good what are to you see doing you here? again, buddy. We, 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 Rutledge, Wood. Uh, we were so good to see you. I think it was some you. chick, but it's you. You carry a little puppy or anything with you in that one? I have no doubt. This is a man's car. This thing is a scary, freakishly fast thing. 618 horsepower. 618, that's mm. a lot. Yeah, that is a that, lot. That is, it's okay. How many does your car have? Oh, Closer maybe to nine, 920 or nine something. Nine and change. Well, horsepower is not really the whole story. Like, look at these these mirrors right here. They actually make a vortice that spins back and puts pressure on the rear wing to give it more downforce. This doesn't even have mirrors. Do you have to wear a beret when you drive this car? No, I, I don't. I actually wear a helmet and a fire suit. Do you have a helmet? I can get a helmet. OK, I mean, I think you have enough hairspray, but I don't know if that's going to really help. <sighs> All right, this will be fun, Tanner. Hope you brought spare tires. Hmm. So Tanner and Carl lined up. It looked like James Bond versus Rambo. Tanner had brought a knife to a gunfight, and the guns were missile launchers. OK, fellas, you guys ready? Hey, roger that. This is it. Two men and two machines. Here we go. Three, two, one. Top Gear had sent us to Vegas to reinvent the taxi. My reimagined and souped up Scion taxi concept won the challenge. My prize was to drive the new McLaren MP4-12C against one of NASCAR's top drivers, Carl Edwards. Hope you brought spare tires. OK, fellas, this is it. Here we go. Three, two, one. control on the McLaren had smoked Carl. I was ahead, but now I had to stay there. I'm gonna use my air brake to distract him. Well, I think it distracts me. It pops up in front of the rear view mirror there. Tanner may have jumped the start, but one thing's for sure about Carl Edwards. He doesn't like looking at tail ends. just about the two most competitive people I know, pretty soon they were at it toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Go, go, go! Woo After five laps, a pattern was emerging. In and out of the corners of the road course, the McLaren's act of braking and rocket ship acceleration gave it the edge. Oh, God, that was so freaking fun. But back on the oval, the Ford's muscle was just too much. I was 
theme. Yes! The McLaren was holding its own against a stock car driven by Carl Edwards on a NASCAR track. Until on the last bank of the oval, Carl dropped the hammer and showed me just what 920 horsepower could do. Wow, that's pretty fun. That is what I'm talking about right there. <clears throat> was nice it fun to watch? Job. Oh my gosh, that was insane. How was it? I can't believe how fast that, well, I can't believe how fast that is on the banking. I couldn't believe how fast that thing stops and goes. It's pretty amazing. Did this thing throw you off a little yes, bit? Yes, it did. I thought the trunk was opening. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> so what have you learned here? I have to say, I have, I have a lot more respect for this car after being out there on the track. It takes off there like it's got a 1,000 horsepower. It's amazing. Yeah, that's one giant horse, and this is like a whole fleet of little <laughs> yeah. little horses trying to work the laws of physics. But what I do know is that I can drive home. Have uh, fun loading yeah. the trailer. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see ya. Hopefully there's not any big bank corners or long straightaways. Other I than hope that, there. Fun. I hope there are. I'm just, just going to turn right. Not just showing off because you're here, that's what he does for everybody, every time. The McLaren, a Jekyll and Hyde of a car. It has the classic looks to cruise down the strip and arrive in style and comfort, but beneath that cool British exterior, its race car DNA meant it stood tall in the NASCAR gunfight. I think the MP4 may have just got itself a green car.